Hey YouTube, Ed here with Jack of All Trades. Well, we're on the way to the dealership with the trailer on the back of the truck to pick up my brand new 2022 Tracker 600 ATV. This is a brand new ATV for this model year. They're phasing out the 570 and it's it's a brand new machine and the fun thing is, is nobody on YouTube has got video of this uh, as a review. I do believe I'm gonna be the first one. So that being said, Let's, uh, let's get to the dealer, let's get this thing loaded up and get it towed home so we can start doing a review on it. All right, so before we get too deep into this review, I downloaded the spec sheets for both the Tracker 600 EPS and the Polaris Sportsman 570 EPS. Now, before any of you Polarisites come out there and start beating me up because I'm picking on Sportsman, stop. I have no beef against Sportsman. In fact, I've got a 2014 Polaris Sportsman XP 550 sitting right outside my door here, and I've got no complaints about the machine. It's got 9,600 miles on it, and other than the stuff that you would expect to have to replace on a machine of that age, i.e. ball joints, tie rod ends, brakes, uh, wheel bearings, things of that effect, I've had no major repairs save one. And that would be the engine damper in between the engine and the transmission, which was a pretty, pretty well-known problem for that machine. And I have had to replace it. But other than that, the machine is, I've got no gripes. It's never left me stranded. It always starts, it always runs, and I've been very, very happy with it. So don't don't come out and say, oh, you're just picking on Sportsman, because I'm not. I'm comparing apples to apples here. Both these machines are very, very similar in pretty much every aspect to include price range, capacity, engine, everything. So I'm trying to make an apples to apples comparison. Not to mention the fact that the Polaris 570 Sportsman is probably the best-selling ATV in the country. They just can't keep these things in the dealership because it's it's got the right amount of power, it's got the right amount of size, and they're just very, very popular. With that all being said, let's get the elephant right out of the room. Yes, the Polaris Sportsman is more expensive. It's about $300 more expensive. Now, you might not think $300 is all that much money, $300 is a little bit of money to me, and that, could, in my opinion, I could put that towards accessories like a winch, hand warmers, you know, things of that effect. So I do take that into account, and that definitely gives the 600 EPS by Tracker a bit of an edge. It has got a lower base price. Uh, as far as engine and drivetrain is concerned, you are talking about practically two identical machines. Both of them have single cylinder, liquid cooled, overhead valve, fuel injected engines. Uh, the Tracker's got an ever so slight edge with one extra horsepower, but really that's even hardly worth, manage, worth mentioning because there's nobody out there on YouTube land watching this video or anywhere else for that matter that's going to be able to tell me they can get on these two machines and say oh that one's definitely got more horsepower because you're lying you can't tell the difference with one horse not in a machine in this class both of them have got a cvt transmission which is basically a two clutch belt drive system polaris is a little more pretentious and they got to call it a pvt or the polaris variable drive transmission but you know whatever makes you feel good i guess both of them uh, have a high-low neutral reverse and park for their for their transmission shifting, and other than that, they're both they're both virtually identical. So there's really not a whole lot to talk about here in engine and drivetrain. Front suspension and rear suspension is where things start to get a little interesting. The Tracker's got dual A arm suspension all the way around, front and back, with a full nine inches of travel all the way around. Polaris has a McPherson strut up front which is a single A-arm system, and it only touts 8.2 inches of travel. Uh, you, you can't tell me that that McPherson strut with a single A-arm is as strong as a dual A-arm system. You just can't, because it's not. 
The other thing is, is Polaris says they've got nine and a half inches of rear travel, which is fine. But when you look at the literature and you talk to a salesman about the Polaris Sportsman, they're going to tell you that this ATV's got nine and a half inches of travel. And they're only half lying to you because that is true in the back, but it's not true up front. I would, I would challenge Polaris, you know, be a little bit more honest in your advertising and say, I've got nine and a half inches of travel in the back and we've got 8.2 inches of travel up front. Be honest about it. The other thing that you got to look at is uh, Tracker's actually got four brakes, whereas Polaris is running a three-wheeled brake system, i.e. The, the Polaris has two brakes up front and one brake in the back to brake, brake on the rear axle, whereas Tracker's actually got a brake system on all four corners. So every wheel has got its own brake, and that, that to me is just a superior braking system. Both of them have a hydraulic foot brake. Both of them run absolutely identical tires with steel wheels. They run virtually the same kind of shock absorbers. Uh, Tracker's pretty proud of this HSLA frame, this high-strength, low-alloy frame. And that in and of itself, I can't really speak to other than the fact that when I've seen pictures of both the frames with no machine on them, the Tracker frame looks like it's a little more well-built and it's a little stouter and it's got some more bracing in it. So I have to give the edge to the Tracker because they're proud enough about their frame to say something about it, whereas Tracker, or Polaris, excuse me, is so unproud of their frame, they just don't even bother to mention it. Uh, performance is kind of interesting numbers. Uh, the Tracker's got an extra 30 pounds of cargo capacity on the machine itself, and that, that's derived from the front and rear racks. You get an extra 10 pounds on the front rack, and you can put an extra 20 pounds on the rear. The interesting number is this 300 pounds of towing capacity, which Polaris definitely has an edge on. Polaris advertises 1350 towing capacity, whereas the Tracker only advertises 1050. So if towing capacity is a concern for you, that's a number you need to look at. This is just an annoyance. This inch and a quarter rear receiver on Polaris, which has been on the Sportsman for years, and I hate it. Tracker's got a two-inch rear receiver, which means I can take the receiver hitch out of my truck and I can slide it into my ATV and pull trailers. Come on, Polaris, what's, what's with these engineers? Pull your head out, put it on straight, and get a damn two-inch receiver on the back of this machine and get with the, get with the times. This little inch and a quarter thing, it's just, it means you got to have a special hitch for that machine, and it's just dumb. Skid plates, uh, Tracker skid plates are plastic. Uh, they call them polymer, but polymer is just a fancy way to say plastic. And the, the Polaris skid plates are steel. The only big difference here is the Polaris skid plates only cover up the vital organs, i.e. the engine and the transmission. They don't cover up anything else. Whereas the tracker skid plates are full length, which means you've got a little better shot of gliding over stuff and not high centering. The other thing with the, with the polymer, i.e. plastic skid plates, is they're replaceable. Uh, you can't weld plastic to steel, so they've got to be removable, which means if you bang one up, you can always replace it if you damage it. You can't do that with the steel ones because they're welded into the frame. At least in my 2014, they're welded into the frame, and I cannot believe that Polaris would do anything different in that aspect. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and somebody come into the comments and tell me that the steel skid plates are replaceable on the new 2022 model, and I'll concede that. Uh, overall dimensions, the tracker is about three inches longer than the Polaris. Uh, the width is nearly identical. It's not worth even talking about 0.2 inches. The overall height is uh, three inches taller on the tracker, and that, that height is derived between the running boards and the seat. And as a guy who's 6'3", I can appreciate the extra three inches of legroom. Uh, this is where Polaris really, really kind of kicks tracker in the butt is the Polaris is 42 pounds lighter. Tracker's a bit of a fat girl, and that extra 42 pounds can make a difference in the handleability, the nimbleness of the machine, uh, the drivability of it, but it can also make a difference in the traction, where sometimes a little extra weight also makes a difference. But I got to give the edge to the Polaris here because it is 42 pounds heavier. Uh, the Tracker's got an extra inch and a half of wheelbase, which really, really shouldn't equate to a whole lot of advantage. They both have identical ground clearance. The fuel capacity, though, that's that's a big one. You get more than a gallon extra gas on the tracker, and that just equates to more range. I got to assume that these two engines are probably very similar in fuel economy, and that extra gallon just means you're going to be able to drive a little further. So overall, when you'd weigh everything up, in my opinion, the tracker kind of kind of edges out the Polaris Sportsman. 
right down from price, $300 cheaper, to dual A-arms all the way around, the, the, the heavier frame, you've got four-wheel brakes, uh, a little bit of better cargo capacity on the machine itself, even though it suffers in the trailering uh, area. The skid plates are full length, and it's got a little more leg room, and it's got a full extra gallon of gas on board. So that, to me, equates to a little bit more of an edge on the tracker. So if you want to look at this list, I'm not going to go into it in any more detail. I will leave it up here. You can pause the video, and you can look at these numbers for yourself and make a determination. But I think the edge goes to the tracker. So we are out here uh, with the tracker. We've got it unloaded. And what we're going to do today is we're going to do a bit of a walk around on the machine. We're going to discuss some of the things that they've changed from the last iteration or last version of this machine and what they've got now. And then we're going to take it for a little test run, a little drive today. Now, I can't really get into it with the motor today because it's still within the break-in period. The first 10 hours of use is your, is your factory break-in period. And they recommend uh, not more than half throttle not holding the throttle at a single RPM for a long period of time, varying the throttle so that all the parts mesh together and sync up. So I kind of got to be a little easy on it today, but we'll get a general idea of the handling and the feel of the machine. So let's, uh, let's relocate the camera. Let's do a little walk around. Let's talk about some changes that they've made on this model year for better or for worse. And then let's get on it and let's take it for a ride. You know, some notable differences that they've made on this machine. Uh, and we'll just start here on the left side of the machine and we'll talk about some of the changes and differences. You'll notice right there where the gas tank filler is. Uh, once upon a time on the last iteration of models, the gas tank filler was actually up here on the, on the left rear fender. Uh, they've moved it down there. Now that is a sealed gas cap, but I'm mildly curious as to how that's going to handle being submerged in deep water or anything like that. If you're one of these guys that really likes to ford creeks and really get these things wet and half submerged to water that that could potentially be a problem like i said it's got an o-ring in it and it's supposed to be a sealed gas cap just doesn't look like the greatest positioning for the gas cap to me but we'll see how it goes over the course of the years i am not one of these heavy high water guys uh, i just like to ride trails and i like to hunt and so i don't think that's going to be a problem for me Another notable change that they made, as you can see on the back, there is only one tail light. Uh, used to be on the last version that they had two tail lights, one over each wheel. They've changed that this year uh, for whatever reason. I do not know, but it is uh, it is a fact that they've only got one tail light on here. Coming around to this side, the notable change is you got rid of that stupid four-wheel drive switch uh, that was hand-operated and ran off of a cable. That was quite possibly one of the most ridiculous designs I'd ever seen. They tried to make it sound like it was a really good thing because it was quick and easy to use, but in all actuality, that, that four-wheel drive switch was a, was a problem, and they were braking all the time, and it was quite literally a cable that ran down on the other side of the machine and engaged the transaxle to give you four-wheel drive. This new four-wheel drive now is electronic. It's very simple. To push it over to make it electric or to make it four-wheel drive push it back for two-wheel drive very very simple very very straightforward you'll notice that right here is where you're supposed to add your coolant uh, and the model prior to this this coolant cover was actually right under this bar for the rack so they've they've had the wherewithal to move this and actually get it into a place where you can use it which is which is a good thing just simple little stuff like that that is sometimes engineers overlook. There's the fuel tank right there. You can see here that uh, there's the four-wheel drive actuator, which is now electric. So we don't have to worry about that cable anymore. And then if you come on the other side of the machine, you can see here, what are we missing from last year's models? We're missing the engine. And we're missing that big exhaust pipe, and we're also missing the oil filter. They've changed the... The position of this engine in these in these bikes so it's really really changed around a lot and i'll show you what difference the difference is but you no longer have 
that big exhaust pipe up here with that oil filter nestled in between the, the corner of the exhaust pipe, which was just a horrible design, in my opinion. And, uh, and the reason for that is, is I'm one of these guys that likes to warm the machine up before I change the oil so the oil is nice and viscous and flows out of the, flows out of the engine completely. You can't do that when you've got it all wrapped around the, around the exhaust pipe like that because you're going to burn yourself taking that oil filter off. So this was a, that was a much needed change. All right, another change that they made was if you take this seat off, set that aside things under here have really changed uh, you no longer have to get in under the seat to get to the battery the engine is up here uh, you can get to the spark plug you can get to the engine oil filler right here here's the throttle body uh, for the fuel injection system everything is right here that you need to get to underneath here they've got your your little toolkit now for, as I understand it this little toolkit is supposed to have everything in it that you need to do a roadside repair on, on the machine, i.e. change a belt, things of that effect. And everything in this toolkit is supposed to be here. So inside the toolkit you get you get a wrench that's got the Torx fittings, and it looks like they use the same size Torx on everything, which, which is actually a good thing. Bravo to the engineers for doing that. Uh, you've got the adjustment wrench for adjusting the firmness of your shocks. That's in there. That's awesome. They even give you a low-pressure tire pressure gauge. That's cool. Although it's not a real good one. You can feel it's pretty lightweight. And they give you a spark plug wrench pretty pretty garden variety toolkit and there's one more little piece in here looks like they give you an extra torque screw in case you lose one so what what that's for I I'm, it must be just a spare they must just give you a spare torque screw just in case you lose one or you need one so just a real basic toolkit but supposedly you should have everything in here in here you need to do a basic roadside or trail side emergency repair, that's the theory anyway, uh, to include being able to change the belt on this. Now I know there's other models of machines that you pretty much can't change the belt unless you've got a full blown tool kit along with you and you're towing it back. So that's, that's a nice option. Hopefully I never have to use it. That tool kit will hopefully, if I'm lucky, will just sit there and never be needed. So this is one of the neatest things that uh, they've done for a change on this thing that I really appreciate about this bike. Uh, you can see there's an exhaust pipe back there. So that exhaust pipe actually comes out of the engine and it goes directly backwards. They basically turn this engine backwards and they face the exhaust to the rear. In the old machines, the exhaust was pointed towards the front of the machine and then had a big run of pipe that went all the way down the machine laterally to the back to get to the rear muffler and back here. Well, all they've done here is they've actually just turned the machine, shot the exhaust going out the back of the machine from the get-go, and you have a very short exhaust pipe, which equates to no heat. You're not getting any heat down around by your legs. You're not, your pants aren't feeling like they're on fire when you're riding on a hot day. You, you basically send all the heat right to the back of the machine and the rider experiences no heat whatsoever. It all just goes straight to the back. So that is a very neat feature that they sent all that heat out the back of the machine. So another thing we've got here that a lot of machines don't have or some machines don't have is we've actually got four wheel brakes. These are the back wheels. I've got a brake disc and caliper on this side. And here's the brake disc and caliper on the other side, which should give, which gives us a full four-wheel brakes, and it should give us better braking capabilities. So you can see up front here, we've got full, true, dual, dual A-arm, independent front suspension. There's no McPherson struts up here. This machine's got a full nine inches of travel all the way around, with a complete 11 and a half inches of ground clearance. All right, another feature about this machine that I, I found 
very pleasurable when I found it out. And I actually didn't know this until I, I got it home and I started looking. I couldn't find any grease certs on this machine anywhere. I actually ended up calling the dealer and saying, hey, where are the grease certs on this thing so I know where to grease it when I take it out and ride it? And there are none. This is a completely greaseless system. So all the bushings for the control arms, the, the ball joints, tie rod ends, everything on this machine, there is no greasing. It's a completely greaseless system, which is just one less maintenance headache that you have to worry about at the end of every season. Now understand, I'm used to a Polaris Sportsman. They've got upwards of about 800 grease zerks in them, and 400 of those you probably can't get to. Or they're full of mud and they're packed with dirt and you just can't do anything with them. This is, this is not a problem with this system. These bushings are designed to last a specific amount of time, and I don't know what that is. And when you wear them out, they make them reasonable enough in price and easy enough to maintain so you can actually replace them and just replace the bushings. You don't have to worry about greasing. So that is a very pleasant thing because I tell you what, many a time am I in my garage trying to grease other machines that I own, and it's not just Polaris, it's every other machine I've ever owned, and swearing at the greaser, it's because they're plugged up or you can't get to them, or you're swearing at the engineer for putting it in that location. It is not an issue here. Okay, one, in, one additional feature on the new models, which is extraordinarily nice that I like is all these side panels are removable without tools and it's it's quite simply just a matter of removing the seat and then you quite literally just pull the side panel right off and there it is and now you can see you can get to your battery you can get to your oil filter your oil dipstick is right down here your brake reservoir for your foot pedal it's all right there all easily accessible same on the other side. The only difference on the other side is you have to remove the gas cap to get it off. Then to replace the side panel, it's just a matter of putting everything back in the slots where they're supposed to be. Now the trick is this black panel has got to go underneath this red one. So you just push it in there, tuck it in, Push everything back into place. Verify the three slots are in their spots in the bottom. Everything's put back where it's supposed to be. Reinstall the seat. And there you go. The, the machine's put back together. So fully accessible and fully removable side panels without tools, which is an excellent feature. So there you have it. There's a quick walk around of the Tracker Off-Road 600 ATV. Uh, some things that they've changed for the better, some things that they've changed that might not be quite so good. But we're going to give it a try and we're going to keep an open mind about it. The biggest thing that concerns me is the, uh, the low point of that fuel tank. But not so much for my use, but for the, you guys out there that really like to get these things wet and you really like to get these things in a lot of mud, that might be a problem if you're up past the running boards in in moisture so keep that in mind when you're out riding these things and if you buy one that that cap needs to be on nice and snug and tight to make sure you don't get any water in there so it's a beautiful morning let's uh let's stop with the yammering and let's go for a little bit of a drive and see how this thing operates and drives Now that we're on the machine and we're riding it and driving it, some things I noticed, the seat is very, very comfortable. Uh, the foam underneath the seat is just the right amount of density to give you good support, yet it's not so stiff and, and difficult to sit on that it's uncomfortable. Uh, I do notice that the steering on the system, the electronic power steering works flawlessly. 
Uh, not only does it make it easier for the machine to handle, but it also takes all of the road uh, vibration and road issues out of the handlebars so you don't actually feel any of the road bumps or anything like that while you're driving. It just completely dampens all that. So those are two things that I noticed while I was driving it and let's go on for a ride. So while we're enjoying this lovely scenery while we ride here, uh, another thing that I noticed was that the machine itself is actually very, very quiet, especially when you've got a helmet on. Uh, you can hardly even hear it running. It's, it's a very, very quiet machine, which if you're a hunter, makes a big difference. That means you're not gonna be putting a whole lot of noise in the woods. I was very pleased at the, at the low noise level of the machine. In addition, I can tell that the electronic fuel injection is really doing its job well. Uh, aside from the fact that it gives you outstanding throttle response and horsepower, I couldn't hardly smell anything coming out of the tailpipe. Uh, I could smell a little bit of that new parts smell as the new parts are warming up, but other than that, it was very, very odor free and I was very pleased by that. All right, I gotta say, uh, this thing rides pretty doggone nice. It's extremely comfortable and smooth in that 25 to 30 mile an hour range, you know, your average trail riding. And it, it absorbs bumps, it's got plenty of power, it's plenty snorty. Now, like I said, I'm not able to really get into the throttle, but I gave her a little bit of onion and, and I tell you what, it, it's got power. You can definitely appreciate that full nine inches of travel. Uh, I don't appreciate the not, not 11 and a half inches of ground clearance simply because I don't have the terrain to test it out on. But uh, I'm here to tell you, this thing, this thing rides smooth. It's quiet. It's powerful. It chews through the corners. It, it just, I really am so far very happy with it. Um, not that I haven't been happy with my previous machines, but I'm, I'm really pleased with this. this. This machine is very, very solid, very, very smooth. I really like how quiet it is. It's nice and quiet. And it, it's, it's easy to handle. I can, I can even steer it with one hand, which is not your recommended riding technique, obviously. But, you know, I, I did a little bit of selfie shooting myself and I had one hand uh, operating the camera. I'm out here by myself. It's nice, open, clean trails. It's it's not at all dangerous. So uh, it it handles just really, really well. I, I could have no problem giving this to my to my kids to drive. It's it's handles so easy. 
So at any rate, uh, just going to take a little break here and then let's get back on the trail. there it is just a nice little leisurely ride this morning uh, so far right out of the box not pushing the machine too hard I'm fairly impressed you really come to appreciate that full nine inches of suspension travel this thing does not have a power problem it is extremely powerful especially on the bottom side it's very very torquey throttle response is almost instantaneously braking is excellent it really brakes well it carves out the corners, and uh, so far, with a very gentle ride this morning, I'm pretty happy with it. Now, I say gentle ride because I didn't push it too hard. I'm still within the 10-hour break-in period, and I don't want to push it until the engine's been properly broken in. But as it stands right now, I'm very, very impressed with, with everything about the machine so far. Well, now we'll get those other eight hours under our belt. We'll get that first oil change, and then let's really put this thing through its paces and see what it's all about. But so far, I'm very, very happy with the machine. The other thing that I'm very happy with about it is there's obviously a lot more leg room on this machine. Now at six feet three inches, I got a lot of leg. And you can see on this machine, my legs are at a slight word downward angle. So it sits up a little bit higher and it's extremely comfortable for a bigger guy. My Polaris, my, my 2014 Polaris Sportsman XP, my legs are a little bit more on the level side or on the parallel side and I notice it in my hips and in my butt by the end of the day and on the back of my thighs I get a little sore because my legs my knees sit a little higher this thing I'm a lot more comfortable on it than I can see that this is going to be just a much more comfortable ride altogether so that's a nice option and I was very pleasantly surprised by that when I got to riding it and you saw it here first the jack of all trade channel has the first review walk around and test ride of the tracker off-road 600 atv and i gotta tell you i'm very happy that i bought this thing now tracker's not paying me to do this i'm not getting paid by bass pro shops or anybody else to do this i bought this machine with my own money so this is totally me i'm not being paid this is my honest review now, if you like this kind of content and you're liking this video, please hit that like and subscribe button. Make sure you ding that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos because we're going to be doing some more on this as time goes on. Uh, I'm going to have to demonstrate an oil change at some point in time, and we'll just demonstrate some services. With that, let's wrap this video up. This is Ed with Jack of All Trades. As always, thank you for riding along, and we will see you on the next video. <laughs>